this is Josh White with JW Math Tutoring. In today's video, I'm going to talk about Desmos being added to the online version of the ACT math exam. So let's go ahead and take a look. But life is a dream the calculus could never predict. Last week, the ACT sent out an email announcing that the Desmos graphing calculator was now available for online testing directly within the testing platform. Uh, this is big news because, as you can see in the email, previously it was just a basic scientific calculator. So <coughs> there was really not that much of an advantage to do uh, online digital testing versus paper testing because, you know, you use the same. You Essentially, you could use the online basic calculator or you bring your TI-84 that you could use for either. But now, you have access, um, apparently, to the Desmos graphing calculator for the online version only and not for the paper version. So, this is potentially big news and um, would most likely change my recommendation to take the digital or online version of the ACT, at least for the math section, compared to the paper version. Now. What I'm going to do in this video is just briefly demonstrate a couple problems where you could use Desmos to solve the problem entirely and show why it's such an advantage over um, the, say, a TI-84 uh, graphing calculator. However, this is just a small sample, and I'm going to uh, create and come out with more uh, Desmos ACT math uh, related content in the days uh, and weeks ahead. You know, similar to how I have my ultimate Desmos guide to digital SAT math, I'm going to do the same thing for ACT math. So, let's go ahead and just take a look at a couple example problems um, <clears throat> to show you the power of using Desmos. All right, so a couple things. First, this is from um, online tests on the ACT's website. It is uh, practice test number one. So if you've not completed this test, and want to save it for grading, I mean, then spoiler alert, don't watch the solutions um, just yet. Come back after you have completed this practice test. So um, let's go through here and highlight some of the questions that I wanted to take a look at. So the first one here is question number 15. Okay, get rid of this. So you're given this expression here. We are going to expand out y plus 7 to the third power. Normally, the way you would do this, or say the way you do this by hand, is you know you'd write it out three times, and then you'd multiply the first two parentheses using FOIL, and then you'd combine the like terms, then you'd multiply that result by y plus seven. And you'd have to multiply the whole thing out. Of course, if you know Pascal's triangle, you already know what the answer um, is going to be. However, all we need to do is open the Desmos graphing calculator, graph the first function. Now, the thing that's a little tricky here is it's not going to graph it as directly as a um, as a variable of y. It's basically you have it's like y. It's Desmos is defined for y as a function of x. So all I'm going to do is here I'm just going to change every y to an x. Okay. So that's a little workaround you have to do, and of course that'll be featured in you know the guide that I end up making. Now we just go through the answer choices, and we're just going to graph them. <coughs> and see which one completely overlaps the original expression. What we're doing is we're basically matching equivalent expressions. Notice for the first answer choice, that does. So this is the answer. You don't need to go any further. Now, I will show you, just to confirm, that the other answers are not correct. Again, remember, i got to change everything to x. All right, so there we go. Notice uh, this is not correct. If you look at this, of course, I'm just going to take these two off. Notice this is not correct. It does not overlap the original. 43, okay, take this one off. And again, same thing. So you can clearly see the first one is the one that directly overlaps it. That's all you need to do when you are matching equivalent expressions. You could also do this with numerical values as well if you think that's easier. If <coughs> you say change this to an A and then you did everything with an A, and then you add a slider for A, and you're looking for which expression gives the same exact value as the original one, okay? So that is one example where Desmos is very useful. All right, let's clear all that out. 
Next, let's go to question number 19. All right, so this is an arithmetic sequence problem. So the thing is, arithmetic sequences are really just linear functions, because the way an arithmetic sequence works, right, you're adding the same value to each consecutive term. So all we need to do is add a table and put in some of these points. So the first term, term 1, is 7. The second term is 21. Third term is 35. We don't need any more, but I'll just enter them all in, uh, just because we're given them. Fifth term, 63. Okay, now you can just click the linear regression button, although personally the way I prefer to do it uh, is I prefer to type it. Now, we want to know what's the value of t25. So the question is, what is the value of this function when x is equal to 25? So there's multiple ways you could do this. You could just graph x equals 25, and then you have to zoom out, look for the intersection point. This is, there's the points right here. It's 343. That's one way to do it. You could also just take the function now and notice it's 14 times 25 uh, plus or minus 7 right there, 343. If you want to do it that way, um, you could technically type the function itself like this, and then you could click this table button, and then you could type 25 in here and get 343. So I want to do it very quick, very easy to find the value of the 25th term using Desmos. All right, next, let's look at solving some formulas. Since that is something you can absolutely do in Desmos as well, I don't know that you can do this on a TI-84. Maybe you can do it on an Inspire, um, but it's very quick, very easy to do this in Desmos. So here's the formula. It's got a bunch of letters, right? All we do, we type in the original equation, but we turn it into regression. It will auto-assign values to A, B, C, and D. Now we're going to type in each answer choice. And we're going to look and see, does this give me the value for b that it has up here in the regression? So in the regression, it said b is equal to 1. OK, answer choice A, is this value equal to 1? No, so this is not equal to b. Now we would move on to answer choice 2, or answer choice b. So I'm just going to swap these. Is this equal to 1? Yes. OK, so we'll keep b for right now. Um, since we have to keep it, I'm just going to type the others. OK, this is clearly not equal to 1, so this is wrong. Um, and now let's check D. So get rid of that, put the 2 down here. OK, this is not equal to 1. Therefore, correct answer to this problem is going to be letter B. All right, next, let's look at uh, question 37 here. Delete this. All right, this problem, you are given a polynomial, it's third degree, they give you one of its factors, they want to know what are the what are the other zeros of P. Now of course you can do this same process on a T84, but it's just so much quicker um, to type and click on uh, Desmos. So what are all of the zeros here? Well, we've got negative 2 and positive 3. Those are the only two x-intercepts, the only two places where it crosses or touches the x-axis. So correct answer to this one is going to be uh, letter C, and that's it. No more work that you need to do. All right, let's look next at this problem. So in this problem, we can use sliders. So I'm going to set the range here for M from 1 to 4. And for N, from 4 to 6. 6, and for p, from 8 to 10. p is 8 to 10. OK. And we're looking at the value of m over n times 1 over p. So if you don't know the theory behind this, which is that we want n and p to be as small as possible, but we want m to be as large as possible, what we can do is I can fool around the sliders and see what happens when I make the numbers smaller or larger. So for example, I want the largest possible value. When I make m larger, does the value of the number increase? Yes. I mean, it's still a decimal, so it might be difficult to see. But notice it goes from 0 0.03 all the way up to 0.12 or 0.125. So I want m as large as possible. What about n? All right, 
why is the step here set to 6? That's not what we want. Okay, so notice I started here, right? Now, when I increase this, does it make the number larger? No, in fact, notice the number is getting smaller. It starts at the 0.125 and it goes down to 0.05. Therefore, I want the smallest possible value of n. All right, now, what about for p? So if I do the same thing here, I'm starting here at 8. As I increase it, does the number get larger? No, notice it gets smaller. It goes from 0.125 down to 0.1. So in order for the number to be as large as possible, I want the smallest possible value of p. Okay? Therefore, this is my this appears to be my greatest possible value, and I can just click the fraction button and it's right there, it's d, it's one eighth. So that's how you can solve this problem entirely in Desmos. Alright, let's look at one more. And then that'll be it for this video. Let me clear this all out. Okay. So again, if, if you know the concept of standard deviation and what it is and how it works, you can obviously look at this problem and just be able to answer it immediately. However, if you don't or you want to check, what you can do okay, is we can just type in the standard deviation of all the answer choices. And what I'm going to do is, so I don't have to type out the function, I'm just going to duplicate it and then go down here and make the changes. And then for this one, it's going to be 2, 3, 5, 7. And for the last one, I should just delete this and 5, 5, 5, 5. Okay, so which of these has the largest standard deviation? Well, it's obviously answer choice A, 5. The others are all less than 5. Okay, so again, this is a problem where you could do the entire thing in Desmos, and it doesn't even take that long to type it all out. All right, so I hope you enjoyed um, this, you know, relatively short, quick video, just kind of highlighting uh, some of the types of problems and things that you can do with Desmos. Um, like I said, I am going to create ACT math specific content, you know, for the types of problems that appear on the ACT uh, coming up in the next, you know, couple of days and weeks and months, uh, very similar to my ultimate Desmos guide for SAT math, you know, that I've had out there. Um, basically since uh, the start of 2025. And that's helped a bunch of students, you know, tremendously on the SAT math section. So be on the lookout for that. Um, if you did like this video, please do give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, um, and sign up for notifications. And uh, otherwise, be on the lookout uh, for more a ACT math related content. If you enjoyed this video, uh, if you have any questions or comments on these problems, please do leave them below. Um, otherwise, if you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and sign up for notifications. And of course, as I mentioned earlier, uh, check out my Improve Your ACT Math Score course if you're looking uh, for more resources to help raise uh, that ACT math score of yours.